It's a good win. There's a lot of people. It's like Woodstock, except everybody's got their clothes on. But eat a damn snack. You're like my wife when you get in space. You just get lost. Short steps are better than long steps. That's the only time in your life you're going to hit short is better than long. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to 614 Headsets, the weekly football podcast where we say football is more than just a game, it's a lifestyle. Just yesterday, we had the amazing opportunity to go to the OHSFCA clinic. We had a, a great time sitting down with some of the great coaches from across the state. And over the next couple of weeks, we're going to try to bring you some special segments that we titled Four Quarters with some great coaches. Before we get into that, though, we have to mention our show sponsors who make all this possible. And the first one I want to talk to you about is Fundraising University. Fundraising University of Ohio offers a variety of fundraising efforts that helps football teams run profitable, effective, and fast-paced fundraisers designed to raise the most money in the shortest amount of time to reach your fundraising goals. Fundraising University of Ohio is locally owned, operated, and with their six-step blitz system will help your team maximize profits. Brett Maxwell with Fundraising University will sit down and help you pick, plan, and strategize and execute your next fundraiser. If you're interested in us running a fundraiser for you, please contact Brent Maxwell at bmaxwell at fundraisingtheletteru.net or 740-501-8946. And our second sponsor who we, we got to mention is Story Rivals. Story Rivals Sports Me offers the most unique highlight experience available. Story Rivals delivers your team's content with services designed to change the way you experience these unforgettable moments now and for a lifetime. Story Rivals now offers a complete team apparel and player shop customizable to your program. Contact us by mail at info at storyrivals.com to schedule an appointment with a member of our team. Two great services, two great sponsors. As you head into this next off season, reach out to them to set your program into new heights in 2024. Without further ado, let's get into it. I hope you enjoy these uh, next couple segments titled Four Quarters, live from the OHFCA Clinic. Make sure you subscribe on, on YouTube and whatever platform you might listen to the podcast. And also make sure you go check out the home of 614 Headsets at www.614headsets.com. Check out all the great content we have on there, and maybe you can go and check out the lab. Enjoy the show. We're still live at the OHSA. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, I was trying to slide out of here. Yeah, Dang I it. thought he was going to Irish goodbye me there. Like Last one, two great coaches on. We're going to switch it up a little bit. We got Coach Namath currently at Wittenberg University. Coach Cordell, you just heard uh, Coach Geyser give the praise about who he was and being an Ashland guy, and, and he's here. He just told um, us he's getting a pay raise this year. That's <laughs> <laughs> No, it's great, but it's been a great night. We've had a lot of great guys on. It's been a, a great clinic. I want to thank you two for coming on, and I think I've developed a great relationship with Coach Namath over the years, and I'm excited to – the relationship with Coach Cordell has been great from the start, and I want to thank you guys for coming on and, and joining us. We heard a little bit about Ashland's year, but Coach, why don't you give us a little quick rundown of your 2023 season at Wittenberg? Yeah, we finished the year 7-3, and three, opened up the season on the road against Dubuque, Iowa, and went up and got down 21-7 to seven going into the third quarter and battled back and came back and won the game 28-27. On uh, the last play of the game, freshman linebacker out of Sarasota, Florida, made a sack in cover zero and won us the game. And we rattled off some good wins right there. And then we ran into Alma out of Michigan, who went up to Mount Union and beat Mount Union in the fourth quarter in the second round of the playoffs, which Mount hadn't been beaten since 93 in the second round. So Alma got us, and then we rattled off a few more wins. And then we played DePaul, who won our league. We were up. 14 going into the fourth quarter. They tied it up, took us into overtime, and unfortunately we lost the game and lost back-to-back -back games to DePaul and Wabash. Finished the year with a, a good win against Worcester. Finished 7-3. and three. Again, I think the one statistic about Wittenberg that a lot of people don't know is the fact that we've only had one losing season since 1955, and so we were able to keep that streak alive. And for us now, it's just – continuing to build and to find players that are going to help us get back to the playoffs. Still the winningest program, right, in Division Three. Second winningest Second. program in Division Three football. Yeah, that's great. I took a visit there way back in the day. Cur currently tied with Auburn. Currently tied with Auburn at 799 total wins in program history. That's so. great. I'm excited for you to be there. And I'm going to ask – I'm going to hop on and I'm going to ask Coach Cordell one quick question and then Ryan can start firing out some questions. Wow. But 
Coach Cordell, new to Ashland, year one. Congratulations on, on, on everything you did. And I got to ask you, being when I came to Ash, back to Ashland, I kept hearing the word townie. So I'm a townie because I grew up there. That's what they like to say around campus. What's maybe your favorite food spot or spot around Ashland? There's the South Street Grill is a new spot. That's, that's new. When I went and every inter- interview. That's new. That's a new uh, one. That's where I went, and I was like, holy cow, the, the food is pretty good in Nashville. Coach guys has got a big budget taking people to South <laughs> Street Grill. Over there. <laughs> he <laughs> didn't say that on his yeah. part of his podcast. Yeah. One thing that's interesting about it, my, my journey is, and I tell recruits this, is Ashland is the first full-time job I've had where there's a Chipotle in town. And that's okay. new. I coached at Urbana with Coach Nemeth, and we had a good time. We had a good run there, but there was not a Chipotle anywhere near Urbana. At Long Island, there was not a Chipotle. At Ohio, in Ada, there's nothing. I do, I do Ada. There's a Wilson Football Factory. But it's my first full-time job. Coach, en- enjoy those luxuries. <laughs> Being a man from <laughs> Ashland. <laughs> listen, let's, let's rewind the history. Being a man from Ashland, there was no Chipotle when I was there. And the biggest news was when Applebee's came to town. <laughs> okay? Like, we had nothing in Ashland. That's in fact, so you always you drove to Mansfield or Ontario area to even get anything because it's changed so much. Now you've got a Duncan's and you've got a Tim Hortons and you've got all these things back in Ashton. Now I come back home. I'm like deja vu. There's buildings gone and there's new stuff. It's been cool to see the revival of some of the downtown things they've done. Ryan, you go ahead, man. That just added that too, though. Like it's so opposite from ODU, right? Like I was at ODU and we have 15 minutes from Easton. You could go do whatever you wanted good, bad, or indifferent. You could do whatever you wanted in Columbus, Ohio, which was different. Um, Coach Nemeth, I'm going to ask you, for you guys, right, being at Wittenberg, having that much success, what are some things that you guys do to continue the success? Because I always say that it's way harder to stay at the top and stay successful than it is to get there. I think the one thing that's been instilled in our program through Coach Collins, our head football coach, through Coach Finchin before him, and through guys like Bill Edwards and Dave Maurer who are in the College Football Mm -hmm. Hall of Fame from there is competing every day in everything that you do. Coach Collins continuously talks on a daily basis that while you're in the classroom, you're competing for that A or that B. When you go to the weight room, you're competing for that next repetition, whether it's on the bench or the squat. When you come out uh, to practice, you're constantly competing. We keep score in just about every team or group thing that we do. And because there's always a winner and there's always a loser. And so I think the constant just hitting on it every day that we're going to compete and everything that we do, we're going to keep score and you're going to know who the winner or loser is going to be. And we go out and do one-on-ones and, and we have a point system that we go through. We go out and do seven on seven. We have a point system. So I think it's just the constant reiteration of we compete on Saturday for wins and losses through points. Let's compete every day in practice when everything that we do through points. And, right. and um, I think that's what's sustained the level of success at Wittenberg over the years is just flat out understanding that you're here to compete in everything that you do. Competition so. breeds dogs. That's what I always tell our guys. Now, Coach Quarter, for you, what would you say your your best strength is in coaching and what's one of your weaknesses that you recognize as a coach and as especially as an offensive line coach? Yeah, that's a good that's a, a great question. I think one of the things I look back now, I'm a more is more guy and 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 coach guys are uh, our head coaches less is more and and so I look back, and sometimes as offensively, I've, we've implemented everything. Yeah. We've run everything, every run screen you could possibly run. And you look at look back at games like, okay, hey, we messed up because we didn't get enough reps at something. Yeah, but that's something that, that being an Ashland has been great for me to look at that again and say, okay, yeah, we need if we're gonna run something, we got to execute it and be good at it. Yeah. So that's something that has been great at Ashland, I think. I th- from a strength standpoint, I try to recruit really well yeah. and compete and. I'm you can brag on yourself a little bit, coach. You're good. Well, you got to have a strength, and you're good at something. You, know, you can don't be worried I mean, about that. I love scheme, and I love coaching. Try to beat to beat guys in recruiting as well, and just I think it's just a competitive thing. And when I was when we were at our, at Urbana, which was is nothing like Ashland or Wittenberg with the facilities they have on Division Three, we had to figure out how are we going to get kids to to come here. Yeah, and I think that just 
that that was good for me. And we were able to get some good players yeah. to Urbana, I think. And, and I think that's one of the most interesting places ever to think about <laughs> is Urbana College. What was it like? It just alluded on a little bit. You could add yeah. in a little bit. What was it like when you guys found out that, boom, it's done? <laughs> It's over. You both were there, right? Well, you guys were so, both there at that time. So the interesting thing for me is that when I, when we were there, my background, I played college football at Malone University up in yep. Canton. Okay. And so I was a, I was a member too. I was a member of the first football team that they ever had in school's history in 1993. And so the year that Malone shut down, we're actually in the apartment on campus. I think Jim, you might have been staying there too. And we get the phone call from Tyler Haynes, our head coach, and it's 6:30 in the morning, and he says, "Hey, you got to get up." And I'm like, why? We don't have to be at the office till 80. He goes, you got to go to Canton. And I'm like, why? He goes, your alma mater just dropped football. And it was a punch in the gut because not only was I there when it started, yeah, I was there when it ended. Okay. And which made it really difficult for me. Yeah. And then for it to happen at Urbana, we're at home at COVID. I'm on, I'm on the treadmill trying to get a workout in. And were you still living in Pickering? No, time, I though? had built a house in Pickering. I had, I had built a house. You were in living in the same apartment complex. Do you remember that? That we were living yeah. both at Lakes yeah. Edge, right? Yeah. Or, or not Lakes Edge, Arbors at Turnberry right Correct. there. Yeah. We, that's when I first met you. you. Poor <laughs> individual. <laughs> he got, he got to see me just to, running around. We live in the same there, community huh? as but this guy. It was beautiful. <laughs> I'm so sorry for but you. But the crazy thing was, is so we get sent home for COVID on March 15th. And we're at home all up through April and Tyler called, I'm on the treadmill and he says, Hey, did you see that meeting online? I was like, no, cause I was working out. I'm sorry. He goes, yeah. they shut the school down. So not only did it happen to me seeing it happen to my alma mater, but now all of a sudden the job that I'm in yeah. closed down too. Right. And it was very difficult because Jim was invested. I was invested. We had a lot of good football players. We were poised, in my opinion, at that time, defensively, we were the number one ranked college football defense in the state of Ohio. Yeah. We, we were better than everybody else. We were one win away from being in the Division Two playoffs. Right. And then all of a sudden, it feels like the rug gets pulled out from underneath yeah. you. And then it turns from being, you got to learn to be unselfish and say, okay, I've got 50 guys on defense that we got to find a home for. And while you know, you're not getting a paycheck. While the yeah. school paid us, the school paid us, oh, they paid us so for a couple months, which back. was good. But you're, you're trying to help your players get placed into all these other places. And fortunately, as Jim alluded to, we had some really good football players. We had four guys on that football team that earned one AA scholarships and probably another, I want to say, 18 that the scholarship schools came in and took. And we had a really good football team. Jim and I worked really close together, him on offense, me on defense. When I needed something run against us, against our defense, he did it. When he needed something run against his offense, I ran it. You know what I mean? So Jim and I have got a great relationship. And obviously I coached at Ashland with Doug, and I'm so glad that everything is going good for them there. But, man, to ha to see that happen at Urbana when – to be quite honest with you, if they just would have held on a little bit longer, that the president walked into our office right after signing day and said, hey, keep doing what you guys are doing because we have a million-dollar surplus in the budget. Yeah. After we had just signed a class of 60 kids. So it was tough. And, and then that goes back to uh, you as a coach now got to be what you're telling your players, right? Control the controllable. Yeah. Don't worry about – uh, the next thing you got to control what you can. And so the trying to have to live that life now, once you're just lost your job. Right. Yeah. And you guys both have families. I know that you guys, so can you speak a little bit on that too though, coach? Yeah, I was, I, you know, heard, I had a player call me and say, Hey, did you hear? And it was in the morning and my wife was working from home upstairs and I just, I was sitting at my computer doing evals and then I just closed the computer and just sat on the couch and then, one about my day and then all of a sudden about two o'clock my wife yells down starts screaming <laughs> yelling because her aunt called her and heard on the news yeah, yeah, urbana, yeah, yeah. urbana was closing but uh, no we it, it is what it is i think you know my parents were teachers and i believe in higher education i think it's <clears throat> higher education's under attack a little bit and there is cost and and i think the schools high schools are doing a good job of okay hey can we get you job trained or, or is college prep a good route and and uh, i think 
there's going to be some more closures and things like that, and it's Absolutely. tough. I think you'll find an, an, an equilibrium in the, in the market as far as supply and demand for college yeah. students. And Ashland's in a good place. Wittenberg's in a good place. It worked out for a lot of guys. Like I said, like Coach said, a lot of guys, a lot of those guys went on to, to bigger and better things and were in good spots now. It was interesting. I mean, COVID, at the end of the day, it's co- during COVID, too. So yeah. that was a whole wild time. That's when I took over. <laughs> I took over right at COVID. I got the job in February, yeah. shut down in March. It was So, so I feel that. So, Coach Namath, I got, I got a, like a two-fold question for you. Coach Sayers has done a terrible job of getting defensive coaches on here lately. In fact, I even said we two weeks from now, there has to be a defensive coach. So, Coach, make it happen. I already lined up another offensive guy. Coach, I'm going to ask you two things. Sure. Okay. And I, I did this with Coach Pratt, and I thought it was awesome when he was on it. And Coach Pratt did fantastic. I'm going to ask you one. Who got him? You did. Yeah, thanks. Shut up. Okay, that's your Sorry, first kind right, of one. Continue. Anyway. All right. What right now, defensively, being a defensive guy, are, are the biggest trends, or what's the hot flavor in defense right now? I, I, I think, obviously, with everything going on with the Aranda-type style of defense where, you know, you're – you know, used to be it was playing base defense and bringing five and playing fire zone coverages. Now you have a lot of simulated pressures and things of that nature mm-hmm. where all of a sudden now you're given the illusion that you're bringing four or that you're bringing five and then all of a sudden you're dropping somebody. I think those are some of the things I think that are a little bit difficult for some of the offenses at times. I think those are some of the things that are trendy that everyone's doing that everyone's trying to, okay, how can we – implement that into what we're doing I, I know that there's a couple of things that we did as far as going from single high to double high and some of the trap swipe stuff that I learned when from the Browns when Greg Williams was there it hasn't gotten trendy but it's good stuff and I, I know it gave Jimmy some fits in practice when we did it and we actually ran it at Urbana so I think those are some of the things that are unique to defensive football now I love it, and I'm going to be selfish from an offensive perspective and this is what I asked Coach Pratt and I love yeah. it I, I love to just to see the other side what right now is stressing you defensively? What What are some of the things that you are, are scouting and, and, and saying, we have to have a plan for this, or this gave us fits? What, what's been the biggest challenge to you guys offensively? I love the well, body yeah, language. You just first saw because it. I, I call our defense, so I feel the same way when that question just saw it. Hey, There's a lot I'm of a, things hey, that's you know, hard to narrow I'm gonna get down. Some, I'm going to get some out of doing this show. Well, I'm going to talk football. There. I'm going to – I take notes on everything it, we do. It so. was really amazing today in the first talk, in Ryan Day's talk, when he talked about first level, second level, third level RPOs and who you're reading. And it's only do you have to defend the RPO, but now i got to worry about who the hell you're reading. And you're running pin and pull off of it, and you're running power off of it, and you're pulling guys here. and you're well, There's run- damn near three options it's, on every well, play nowadays. That's what I'm getting at is that, I mean, that, that was a great talk from – for he did a good job. Coaches, I really enjoyed his talk this but year. But I also thought it was a great talk for defensive coaches to really dial in and go, man, if you don't have a plan for certain things that you're seeing, and if, especially if a team's running a lot of RPO and they're reading, they're logging the end, they're kicking the end, they're they're running zone off of it. If you don't have a plan for the, some of that stuff, you're going to get the ball taken to you pretty quickly. You know what I mean? And some of the best teams in the country are, are doing those things. What's so funny, and Coach, you might be able to say this, do you even coach your linemen up to know the difference? Because there's a really there's a, a really difference in it. Like a lot – we really – preach our kids on the the fact that if he goes the wrong arm if you're still trying to win with your hat inside and try to get to that relationship it can create a natural log yeah do you teach your kids to do that or is it just our kids just naturally log it like we are preaching to win with your hat inside it's interesting to see how some some people like they'll coach the log or they won't or they'll preach this but the development too and i i guess Probably somebody else did it, and I don't know. But I I love the fact of now the sweeps off of it, mm. where when you're starting to see teams that really will law, wrong arm you, that we're just going to bypass you and go. Yes. It's been a cool development to, to counter. We, we're spill pretty much spill everything technique on, on, with our end, so that happens to us. Like then they just run by our DN, and then my dude's literally like diving <laughs> yeah. and completely misses them. Yeah, we ran. As far as counter goes, you, you say, hey, kick out, he'll log himself. So we got – in Indy, we have time in the off season, and it's hard you – know, we do pool drill all the time in practice, and it's yeah. hard to get – it's hard to simulate. Hey, it's kick out, he will log himself, and you got to square up, and you got to – but I think back, we played we played Concord one time. Anytime you had an, uh, an off-the-ball tight end, they tilted, and they would wrong arm so hard. We're like, we're going to run – we're just going to bypass. We're just yeah, going to bypass. I love we're it. We're going to counter-read. And, and the guard pulled – the tight end wrapped, and – 
We just that end was spilling so hard. He just ran that, straight down the line. That and super counter That's three polars has been my new counter. thing. Well, like, and and you know the one thing that I was gonna say, like I'm sitting here listening to Ryan Day's talk this morning, and he at the end of it he goes, he, he didn't ask if anybody had any questions, and I'm sitting here like chomping at the bit if he's gonna say any questions because the one thing I want to know from his perspective. How many look at all the coaches that Ryan Day has had coach on the defensive line? Larry yeah. Johnson, the guy from Michigan, Greg Madison. Okay, so many people have talked about leveraging, spilling, wrong arming, pup denton. Coach, what's the one thing that you hate to see? Yeah. There was no an- no yeah. one that really got a chance That's- to answer ask him that question and see cuz I would love to know from Ryan Day What's okay. Tougher? Yeah, What's like the that. toughest That's, thing you know, I, when you get guys pulling? Are, are they spilling you yeah. and wrong arming you? Or, well, then we're logging them. Okay. Well, Greg Madison used to teach the pup then, you know, pads underneath pads and get vertical. Is, is that what hurt you? I really wanted to know the answer to that question, and I didn't get a chance. That's to a great no. You know what I mean? Honestly, I'm a defensive guy, so no. I would love to hear that yeah, answer too. I would too. love like, it too. It hey, Coach Geyser, yeah. what did God create on the seventh day? <laughs> what did he do? What did he create? Coach, the Crowder sled, Crowder or power, right? Gapsky, power. That's where I got it from. <laughs> you, you, you throw me out of the club now because we're a wide zone, tight zone team. All right, we're huge in counter. Oh, I just seen yeah. Kyle's hey. heart break hey. just now in his facial expression. Hey, there. The, the moment Coach Dad Ward bought me a Crowder sled. I felt like my life was complete. <laughs> you know, was, <laughs> was next thing. week when you're asking for something else from yeah, him. It's all right. I, yeah, got, I got one more question, and, and, and a lot of people might know this, but, Coach, you played at Ohio State, correct? Correct. And then you were with the Giants, correct? Won a Super Bowl, correct? Yep. What is maybe something you pull from your time in NFL that has made you a better coach today? What is maybe something you still lean on? Uh, that's, that's a great question. I think the way – I. I it's interesting because I was at Ohio State for five years, Giants for four years. I had one coach at each spot. It's different. It's so yeah. transient now. And I pull from all those guys. I pull from things I study. I shouted you guys out on my uh, clinic today. I appreciate it. From a, I was teaching drop back pass protection. I said, hey, I'm not going to talk a lot of technique. If you want a technique, go to 6 one Look at this. Man, I appreciate slide. that. We, so we love it. sets and strikes. And, and one thing that, that uh, you know, I think I've studied a lot post – post the Giants in, in, in Ohio State. And I think just at the end of the day, from both of those places, studying the game. Yeah. There's a lot of tools and techniques. But if, number one, we get from a progression, we got to teach, hey, what's your rule? What's the concept of the play? But then how does the defense, defense what, what is the defense trying to do? I think from both those places, obviously we studied so much the opponent. And that that's certainly something I try to do is give my guys some – some tips on what the opponent is trying to do. Yeah, I want to appreciate you shouting us out, and we we are going to do That's an awesome. episode I with Coach. That. You know, I, we, we I have that. one more question though, just because these guys are uh, family guys, and and we all are. A lot of us have kids, and and what's one thing you guys do during the season, the football season, to make sure that you do get that time with your kids or with your family? Like, what's something? That's such that a you're, great question. What's something that you're intentional about? Something I'm struggling where, with. It to where you're like, hey. No matter what, I'm gonna do this with my kids and my wife. Even yeah. it doesn't matter how crazy my schedule gets, or, or what are just some things that you do to make sure that you do value your family and the time. Just because you guys put in way more time than us, and we feel like we put in a shitload of time mm-hmm. as well. I I think for me, the one thing that we try to do is we try to sit down and eat as a family. I love you know, it. I love to where it. you're able to sit down with your, you know, my wife and my daughter Dalen and my son Drake, and just be a dad and say, hey. How was your day? How are things going? Yeah. How's volleyball going? Oh, it's going good. How, how's football going? I think that personal time at the dinner table, even if it's for us, like we get home late, my yeah. wife, she'll she'll give a little bit to the kids before I get there. But we sit, we try to sit down and eat a couple times out of the week and just spend time and break bread yeah. and how, ask how each other's are doing and how sports are going and even being able to look my wife in the eye and say, Hey, how was your day today? You yes. know what I mean? Just stuff like that. Just I taking mean, time yeah. to be intentional. Take, taking that time, even if it's just an hour. And so I think we try to do that. I know for coach Cordo, I saw him at Jurassic world with his kids and his <laughs> wife. And I loved it. I was like, <laughs> I was like this animal here. Yeah, it was getting crazy in there. It was wild in there. And I thought he was actually on the back of one of the dinosaurs. So I was like, damn coach Cordo, yeah. get down. It looks like yeah. a brontosaurus. Yeah. You got <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's it. I think in the off season you got to be intentional. I try 
first of all, it's just impossible to outwork my head coach. Nobody works harder than him. It, it, it is what it is. But during the season, then it becomes very tough. And I think you just got to find those moments in the off season yeah. when there's a ton of things, obviously in Columbus with the events happening yeah. and, and yeah. things that, and then during the season, I think all, my wife does a great job, brings the kids up and for the games. And, and so I try to, fortunately we had pretty good success at home this season. Try to spend a lot of time with the kids on the field after the game, I, running around, throwing them footballs. and it, Just the memories and, you'll uh, never get. You, you'll you know, never get back. Things stuff. you would never I'll throw get. in one. It's just something I try to focus on a lot. And it's it, because I – like I try to tell our players, man, hey, I'll go – you guys realize I'll go three days and I've seen my kids 15 minutes and it's driving them to the babysitter sometimes. And a shout-out to you mentioning your wife. And I really appreciate when my wife will bring both kids to the end of practice sometimes. And, yeah. and even that 15, 20 minutes where – our players get to see me be a father. My daughter gets to see what we're doing. My daughter already loves football like right. no other. Yeah. But for me, it's been the intentionality of putting the phone away. That's what and I was being super say, present. So it's so easy for us to constantly want to talk about football and how to get better during season and communicate. But the intentionality of hey, I might only have 30 minutes till my kid goes to bed, so I'm going to put this away, and this next 30 minutes I'm going to dominate it and give her everything she wants in that 30 minutes. Yeah. Or it, it, I hate cuddling. And if my wife says she wants to cuddle, it's like, that You just got to bite the bullet yeah, we'll, sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. putting the phone away. Yeah. 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 So it is really interesting, and I'm glad you mentioned it because we're two younger yeah. coaches in, in, in their things, and it's something I've – struggle with a lot to the point where I was at a point last season where I was like, man, I got two kids under three who I'm not seeing. And it, it, I really had to wrestle with myself about, do I keep doing this? Do I take a small break? I made a promise to Bruce's son about making sure I would see him through and he wouldn't have to have a coordinator change in his career and things. I, I appreciate hearing your guys' takes to that from two guys who are great men who've done that for a long time. And I think that's – it's huge just to hear those things because, like, for my wife, man, she's an all-star dude. And I couldn't have picked a better one or had a better one pick me. She changed her entire life and career to run an in-home daycare and be at home with my son and raise him and make sure he's right. And then she brings him to practice, and she makes sure the house is clean, everything's done. So when I get home, I cook dinner, and we do that. That's one thing we do at the house is, is we make sure we eat dinner every night together, and we put the phones away at 8 o'clock and – then I'll sneak into the bathroom like I gotta take a poop, <laughs> but it's a long poop so that I can answer Listen, these messages and check out what's going on. But I don't think at the any, same time that's how you do it. There um, might be about ten listeners on this show who really know how much of a saint she has to be. So <laughs> no, oh, she said you know her personally. So, yes, so that's we, what's funny, Coach. I want to yeah, shake your hand and say thank you for the shout out. Appreciate you, you, appreciate you appreciate having us. Man. Glad glad to have you at Ashley. And then Coach, yeah. Week one for Wittenberg. Who is it? This year, yeah. Baldwin Wallace in Berea. Tear them up. All right, and, and there's a lot baby. of history between yeah. those two teams. We wish you a lot of luck, and we appreciate you coming on and hope you have a great year. Thank you. All right, fellas. Thank you, guys.